Chapter 4 AI Driven Digital Transformation of the Business Enterprise. Part 2 AI Impacting the Workplace, Employment, and the Job Market. Given the current state of the art in AI, the introduction of AI in the workplace will initially focus on augmenting and helping employees to do their jobs better and not necessarily replace them. AI-based technology is creating new ways for employees to maximize their interactions with customers and increase their productivity. Clearly, tasks within jobs will change as more repetitive and mundane tasks will be automated. While few jobs are fully automatable, one study shows that 60% of all jobs have at least 30% technically automatable activities. So which jobs or tasks within jobs will be harder to replace with AI technologies? This would not only be jobs or tasks that have minimal routine or repetition, but likely also ones that require creativity, are difficult to learn through simple observation, require hands-on manipulation, do not involve the use of large data sources, are dependent on human interaction and interpersonal communication, and require social perception. Kai-Fu Li, an AI expert and founder of Cinovation Ventures, has the opinion that every job which takes less than 5 seconds to think will be done by robots. Martin Ford reckons that we will get into a situation where any kind of job that is routine or repetitive on some level will disappear. It is evident that the demand for uniquely human skills will grow. Although millions of jobs will likely be displaced, the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report projects in the order of hundreds of millions of new jobs that will be added over the next few years that require skills in both emotional intelligence and technical intelligence. Some examples of new AI or smart tech related jobs over the next few years will likely include AI trainer, voice user experience designer, ethical and human use officer, data detective, AI assisted healthcare technician, a health wellness coach, ethical sourcing manager, AI chatbot designer, AI digital market expert, AI business and public sector strategy consultant, creativity coach, tech addiction counselor, business behavior manager, AI business development manager, man machine training manager, financial wellness coach, Cyber City Analyst, Augmented Reality Juni Builder, Digital Tailor, and much more. In her book, Limiteer the Future, Jobs of the Future, published in 2019, Isabel Ruhan believes that 85% of the jobs that we will have in 2030 do not exist yet. In an attempt to reveal what our future labor market will look like, she introduces us to new professions that will appear this decade such as robot monitors, managing and configuring algorithms for robots, neuromanager, helping with employee welfare via neuroscientific methods, ethical hacker, fighting against cyber attacks, and digital detox therapist, helping a generation that has forgotten what reality looks like with general well-being and mental health. Some professions are disappearing, while many others are expected to emerge over the next few years, as our evolving technology is transforming society with our consumption patterns and lifestyles that are following suit. Good advice to anyone is to be flexible in the short term and adaptable in the long term. As more and more employees depend on the insights of AI to do their jobs more efficiently and effectively, Developing an AI-ready workforce will be a competitive advantage and create significant value at both the individual and business enterprise level. It is also becoming increasingly important to upskill people to learn how to work with AI. Once key business problems that can be addressed by AI have been identified, it is important to build an agile cross-functional team of stakeholders to educate employees on the business benefits of implementing these AI-driven solutions and also identify new skills and jobs needed in the workplace as part of this. As artificial intelligence in the workplace will fragment some long-standing workflows, it will also effectively create human jobs to help integrate those workflows. There needs to be an understanding in HR of how to use AI across the employee lifecycle, what learning opportunities need to be implemented for key job roles, and reinvent the HR function itself. As AI and smart technology are helping to create a knowledge-based economy, we will see more AI tools that not only helps the workforce to perform tasks more efficiently, but also capable of intelligent automation with self-learning features and assisting employees to innovate. 
instead of relying chiefly on a candidate's credentials, we will also see more skills-based recruitment that involves the setting of specific skills and competency requirements for a job. Some of the barriers to adopting AI technology in the workplace include finding properly educated and skilled people, concerns over data privacy, data availability that is also due to software-as-a-service offerings, ongoing maintenance due to the data-driven nature of AI solutions, and limited proven applications. Once there are effective and successful AI solutions references where everyone benefits, it is easier for a business to overcome bias and trust issues. AI must therefore earn human trust to thrive. Cost savings presented by these solutions also gives businesses the opportunity to upskill their current employees. The focus should be on augmentation and AI as a workplace helper and not on replacing human workers. It would likely change the amount of time employees spend at work, how they work, and provide more room to be creative. Another important perspective of the impact of AI on employment is provided by Richard Baldwin in the Globotics Upheaval, where he predicts that white-collar jobs, which are jobs involving cognitive skill, such as pattern recognition and acquisition, processing and transmission of information, will be swept away faster by digital change than in any previous economic transformation. According to him, the explosive potential comes from the mismatch between the speed at which disruptive energy is injected into the system by job displacement and the system's ability to absorb it with job creation. On the other hand, Richard Freeman, an economics professor at Harvard University, predicts that few businesses will be able to make sweeping changes such as replacing their accounting department with a few people managing the AI-driven accounting software and completely change the way it is doing reporting and controls. AI's impact on the workplace will likely not be like a sweeping tidal wave, but more mosaic in nature across industries. However, external factors such as the COVID-19 pandemic might accelerate sweeping changes as a drive towards digitizing businesses, transformed business models, and a leaner and more agile workplace dynamics takes hold. Advances in machine learning and AI software in general over the next decade would likely lead to more of the white-collar jobs with their currently defined job descriptions being swept away by the smart technology-driven digital change and potentially also make the sweeping changes with respect to the current jobs easier to do. AI has the potential to dramatically remake the economy, where we will see new startups, numerous business applications and consumer uses, as well as the displacement of certain jobs and the creation of entirely new ones. Whereas traditionally new businesses would appoint full-time employees to take on roles in business development, sales, marketing, product development, design, customer support and administration, there are increasingly more flexible options available in the API economy of AI services, which can act as so-called white-collar robots and outsource talent of freelancers, including foreign freelancers and telemigrants, which together offer significant gains in productivity and efficiency and huge cost savings. As we reimagine business processes, we will also see closer collaboration between AI and human workers, where humans work more like humans and less like robots, and a collaborative intelligence where there is a reliance on AI-driven decision support systems to help create work efficiencies. AI-driven automation, of which the pace and extent will vary across different activities, professions, salary ranges, and skill levels, can enable growth and other benefits on the level of entire economies, where productivity acceleration is very much needed, especially with the declining share of the working age population in many countries. As we contemplate the impact of AI on the job market, there are sobering thoughts from several authors that have written on this subject. The possibility of large-scale technological unemployment has been discussed at length by Callum Chase in The Economic Singularity, which refers to the concept of an economic singularity where we need a new economic system to address the situation of AI-driven machines, rendering most humans unemployable. Martin Ford also discusses technological unemployment in his books, The Lights in the Tunnel, and rise of the robots, and emphasizes that we are on the verge of wholesale automation of white-collar jobs and hollowing out of the middle-class jobs. Eric Brynjolfsson and Andrew McAfee, in the second machine age, helped to validate the discussion of technological unemployment where they discuss two phenomena which they coin as bounty and spread. B 
bounty is described as the increase in volume, variety and quality and the decrease in cost of many offerings brought by technological progress, whereas spread is the inequality of labor markets and wealth and ever bigger differences among people in economic success. The latter has also been described as the great decoupling, where we have on the one hand a steady growth in worker productivity over the last few decades, but stagnant growth in median income and employment, with the United States as one of the prime examples. With the economic gains of the information revolution, the top 1% in the US has approximately doubled its share of the national income over the last 40 years and have almost as much wealth as the bottom 90% combined. The question is whether bounty and its economy of radical abundance, as also elaborated by Peter Diamandis and Stephen Kotler in Abundance and Bold, will overcome spread by ensuring that most people are comfortably off and inequality is less of a factor. We are clearly currently extremely far from such a scenario. Brynjolfsson and McAfee recommend some interventions which could maximize the bounty whilst minimizing the spread. In Machine Platform Crowd, they put more emphasis on the way AI and smart technology leads to structural changes in the economy and the kinds of jobs available because of that. In 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, Yuval Arari mentions that instead of competing with AI, humans' jobs can be created by servicing and leveraging AI. But this would not solve the problems of unemployed, unskilled laborers or prevent remaining jobs to be safe from the threat of future automation. Kaifu Li in AI Superpowers shares similar sentiments and discusses two kinds of job loss. The first being one-to-one -one replacements that is typically captured by economists using a task-based approach, where a single AI-driven product or service can replace a specific kind of worker. And the second ground-up disruptions, where AI startups are reimagining an industry from the ground up and looking for new ways to satisfy the fundamental human need driving the industry. He is also concerned that the AI era, if left to its own devices, will shake the foundations of our labor markets, economies and societies and divide the world into the AI elite and the rest, as well as AI rich and AI poor countries. This leads into topics such as a universal economic safety net, losing our jobs to AI versus losing control over our lives, avoiding digital dictatorship and related matters, which I will discuss more in later chapters.